right, so thanks for joining me again for another video. Uh, today we're gonna be doing a review of the Bodega 12 volt dual zone 37 quart or 35 liter fridge freezer which is perfect for camping. This thing is a beast. I've taken this thing now on a four month trek around the entire western side of the United States and it has not skipped a beat. This thing has been great so far. All right, let's take a closer look. All right, so let's take a look at the outside first. As you can see, it does have some nice big wheels as well as a nice handle up here. I'll show you how that comes out in a second. So in the front here, you have a LED screen and that's how if you want to manually control everything, you can do that. Or you can just use your phone and use the app, which is what I typically do. This is a little bit more clunky. On the app, you have full control over what temperature on each zone and it's just a lot easier to do it instead of just hitting a bunch of buttons here. Uh, here's the handle, as I mentioned, and this thing is amazing because you can just pull up on the bottom here and just slide this all the way out and it locks in and then just pick it up. And it's obviously got those big wheels on it. So let's say you're going into a hotel, which I do, you know, probably every week or two. And so when I do that, it's, it's nice to be able to just grab this, pull this, slide this out and bring this in. And then I can just plug it into the AC wall adapter and keep it cool that way. Then it's not taking a drain on the car. Although the drain is very small in the car. Currently when this starts up, it starts up at 32 watts and then slowly goes down from there. So my suggestion is always right before you're getting ready to go camping or go on a trip or anything like that, take this, bring it inside, plug it into the wall outlet and let it cool off in about 15 minutes. And one, it's quicker to cool off doing it with the wall outlet, but it'll also save you a little bit of battery on the Tesla. Now I've seen almost no draw at all from this. I don't notice any difference from when I don't have this in the car to when I do. So I think it's probably negligible. Like I said, it, it starts up at 32 watts and then slowly goes down from there based on how hard it has to work. If it's 110 degrees out, it's gonna have to work a little harder than if it's you know 35 degrees out and I have this set at 37. Now I generally set both sides at 37 degrees. I only use this as a refrigerator, not as a fridge and a freezer, although I did at the beginning, but I just happen to want to have more room for the refrigerator. I very rarely am going to have ice cream or meat that I need to have frozen or anything like that. I'm typically buying something for a trip for a few days and then putting it in here, cooking it within a few days at the campsite, and then that's it. And then I just replenish every time I go out on a new trip. All right, so let's take a look at the other side. All right, so on the back here, this is the power. This is where it goes in right there. Just a little plug like this. Plug it back in, you heard it beep, turn back on. And that's really, it's all in the back. You have a handle right here if you need it, which is kind of nice when you're taking it out of the Tesla. But other than that, don't really use that too much. Um, the top here does have four spots if you want to place a drink here. It is tough enough to sit on, so if you needed an extra chair or something like that, you could sit on it. Um, I have plugged it into Jackery too, and that's worked great as well. Um, I typically, though, just keep it in the car. Uh, whenever I'm on trips, it's always just plugged into the 12 volt, and I just keep it that way pretty much the entire time. When I have the back as the bed, then I usually take this and put it up in the front seat, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, it's just me going solo usually, so typically I would just put this up in the front seat and I put a couple towels underneath to level it out and to protect the seats, and then pretty much it's nice and flat and never have to touch it the rest of the trip. On this side, you just have a couple vents down here. You wanna make sure that those are clear, so you know at least have a little space between that and some other object. You just want it to be able to you know breathe kind of whenever it needs to, and it's you know pulling in air and then obviously cooling it off. And then on this side, this is how you open it. It does come with a cutting board right here, which is built in, which is kind of nice. It's just one less thing you have to worry about to bring on your trip. All right, so to show you the space on the inside, you can see that um, this is the larger side. It goes all the way to the bottom. Uh, the battery and all of the internals and stuff are underneath on the back right here. They're underneath this section. So this only goes down about halfway. Um, typically at the beginning, I use this as a freezer, but soon I found out I really didn't need to freeze meat uh, because like I said, I was just you know buying stuff and then cooking it a few days later while I was camping. So it didn't kind of make sense to do that. And I really didn't need ice cream over here that much, although it sounds delicious. I uh, just, yeah, didn't really need it that much. So decided to turn both sides into the refrigerator and that's been working great so far. So there's plenty of room. I typically put like all my sodas and water and stuff like that on this side. And then over here is where I'll put like things like, 
you know, like a sandwich or a Milky Way, something like that. Have a few, you know, other things in there, maybe some condiments, some butter or something like that. Anything that I want to just, that's kind of smaller, we'll go over there. And then on this side, I'll just take like all my drinks and put those in. And as you can see, like you can fit a lot on this side. I mean, I have just three vitamin waters right here, but I mean, I can put in probably about, I don't know, maybe like 10 to 15 of those. Um, especially if I just kind of lay them down like that and, you know, stack them up and stuff like that. So this side is great for drinks. This side is great for food and condiments. And so far I've been loving it. All right. So this thing is only 42 decibels loud. So it's pretty quiet. You might be able to hear the hum, but if not, um, I don't even hear it when I'm up front. If it's in the back, if it's next to me in front, when it kicks on, when it has to start cooling and stuff like that, then I can occasionally hear it, but it's still usually not bad at all. So at night, sometimes when I'm about to go to bed, you know, I can hear it kick on a little bit, but it's not enough. In fact, it gives you a little bit of white noise, so I haven't minded it at all. So this whole fridge freezer is run through an app. You can use the front screen, like I mentioned, but pretty much using the app makes a lot more sense. Now it works via Bluetooth and you can just easily set that up by just going to your phone's Bluetooth, making sure it's turned on. Once it discovers the fridge freezer after it's turned on, you'll just tap that. It'll ask you a couple questions and you'll pair it up really easily. So in the app, which I'll show you in a minute, one of the things that's cool about that is that you can set each side to whatever you want. Like I said, I set them both to 37 degrees. So for me, it's not that big of a deal, but sometimes people might want to, you know, keep this at like one or two degrees for the freezer and they want this side at 37 degrees. So you can do that right from the app. It's super easy. You can just see the left side, the right side, set it to whatever you want. It's as simple as that. The one thing this fridge lacks, which I really wish it would have had, but I was able to remedy it for only $35. The one thing it doesn't have is there's no way when you're out somewhere else, let's say you're in your hotel or you're out on a hike or something like that. And let's say you have a bunch of meat in here, some chicken, you're going to make wings later at night at the campfire. But let's say all of a sudden the thing turns off for whatever reason. I mean, it could be, you know, struck by lightning. I don't know, but whatever it is, but let's just say it turns off for some reason, which has only happened to me like twice in the four months that I've had it. And I'll explain those two situations, but let's just say you're in a hotel and you have the car parked over, you have your Tesla parked overnight and you're inside and all of a sudden it shuts off for whatever reason. Well, now that food's going to go bad. And you're like, you wouldn't, maybe you don't know it. Maybe it turns back on sometime in the morning and you wouldn't know that, right? So you'd be eating food that might've already spoiled and nobody wants to do that, yuck. So the solution is to have some type of Wi-Fi connection where you can find out, does the fridge freezer actually stay at the current temperature or did it drop below that? Or did it go way above that? And so that's information you kind of need to know when you're on the road. So I found this little GoV Wi-Fi thermometer that just hooks up to my MiFi device that I keep in the car. So I've hooked this up to tell me if the fridge goes above or below a certain temperature. So I can set it to alert me if the refrigerator goes above 42 degrees, let's say, or if it drops below 33 degrees. I have it currently set at 37, like I mentioned. So, you know, this thing just pops in there. The batteries have lasted for months. I think it's got one of those little watch batteries in it. And so this thing's lasted for a long time but you don't really need to replace it probably maybe once a year. And I just take it and just honestly, just drop it in there like that. And that Govi device also has an app. So I can just go into its app, tell it if it goes above 42 degrees, let me know. Or if it goes below 33 degrees, let me know. And it'll send me a push notification and let me know. So if I'm in a hotel and during the night, all of a sudden, for some reason, again, this thing turns off, I can come out and reset it and make sure everything works okay. All right, so this thing I believe is only turned off on me twice. And one time when I was inside a hotel and all of a sudden I came down later in the day, luckily all I had were drinks in there. And when I came down and I went inside to get a nice refreshing cold drink, it was warm. And so I was like, what happened? And this happened again, like a few weeks later and I couldn't understand. And I found out the reason why. So every car is different. And since this goes into your 12 volt plug, so you have to make sure that the voltage is correct. Now, obviously it goes into a 12 volt. Well, there's three settings on here. There's low, medium, and high. 
I just left it at the default out of the box, which was high. Almost every portable car fridge freezer will have that type of setting on it. I found that with the Tesla, at least the Tesla Model Y, it has to be set at M or medium. As long as you set it there, you'll have no problems at all. If you set it at high, it'll occasionally kind of trip it and it'll just shut off. And obviously with food in there, you never want that. Once I switched it over to the medium setting, I've never had a problem since. And that was probably three, three and a half months ago. Uh, the other thing that I need to remind you about is how this works all the time with the Tesla. So with the Tesla, it's not like a gas car where you have the little 12 volt battery and then you have a gas engine and that gas engine has to constantly run to top the 12 volt off. Once that little 12 volt runs out, then obviously this would run out and turn off. But with the Tesla, you have a giant, in this case, 75 kilowatt battery in the Tesla Model Y. So you're just drawing from that and that battery is constantly topping off the 12 volt. So as long as you keep this car running, it doesn't really necessarily turn on or off. The way Teslas work is they either go to sleep or they're on. And so you have to keep this car awake at all times. And it draws a little bit more battery, but not much. And so on the Tesla, there's two ways to make sure that this stays on or awake all the time. And that's what you're gonna to need to do when you have a fridge with you, because you need to make sure that it's cooling all the time, no matter what you're doing or where you're at. So the two ways to do that on a Tesla are one, to keep sentry mode on. That's the car's alarm system or security system. You wanna make sure that that is on, that has all the cameras running all the time. So one, that's just good because it's just safer for you and for your car. But two, that keeps the car awake at all times. So you can be off doing whatever and the car is always awake no matter what. Now, what about when you're with the car? Well, when you're camping or with the car, you wanna make sure that you have camp mode turned on. Once camp mode is turned on, the car again will always stay awake and you never have to worry about it turning off or this thing turning off as long as the setting is at medium at least with the Tesla. Might be different with a gas car or different models, but with Model Y, I found that medium works great and keeping it in camp mode or sentry mode turned on and you're good to go. All right, so like I said, I usually just keep it back here when maybe I'm in town uh, in Vegas and I'm just like running around town and I have the seats up and I'm not camping. Then I'll just kind of keep it like this or actually what I do is I usually just put it like this and it just sits in there and then I have room for other things that I need to put in there. But what about when I'm camping? Obviously I can't have it back here because as you've seen in my other videos, this whole back area, I turn into a bed. So since I usually travel solo, I take this and put a couple towels underneath it and kind of bunch them up so that it makes it nice and level. You definitely want to make sure this thing is level so that it stays on. That's one other reason it might turn off. If it's at like a huge angle or something like that for an extended period of time, it might trigger it to turn off. But if I put a couple of towels under there and keep it nice and level, no problems at all. And I usually face it toward me. So when I'm in the driver's seat and I'm driving and I want to get something to eat or something to drink, I can just open the lid from the inside and it works great. All right, so it's currently locked. As you can see, you try to hit it, nothing happens. That's how it's locked. So now let's say you want to unlock it. You just hold them both down for a few seconds. There you go. You can see that little thing happen. Right now, I've set it with the app at 37 degrees on both. Um, it kind of fluctuates because I had the lid open a lot. So once you uh, close it and it's closed for a significant amount of time, it'll kind of even itself out and get back to like 37. You can see the voltage right there that I talked about. It's a 12 volt, but if you put it at medium, uh, it does it at about 11.5 volts. And that seems to work good for me. I've never had it shut off once I put that to medium. There's some settings over here, so let's open that. You can change the max right there. You could change, you could hit it a couple more times and change the medium, and which will change the voltage. And that's pretty much it. Everything else you just kind of do from the app. And then this is the power button on and off right there. The app is a lot easier and a little more intuitive, has a few more options. So I tend to use the app and I'll show that to you now. All right, so let's open the app here. The fridge freezer has to be on, and then you can just go in here and hit start scanning for fridge. All right, there it is. We'll tap that. It's now connecting. Okay, and that's pretty much it. You can see the current temperature is 39 degrees, and the front of it says 39 degrees. And uh, you can just control it here with the left or the right side. The left side 
is the normal fridge. That's the larger side. Then the right side is that shallower, typically what would be the freezer. But again, I'm using them both as the fridge. So that would be the right side. You can just see that the current temperature on the right side is 33 degrees, while the current temperature on the left side is 39 degrees. And again, I had the top open when I was doing the review. So once it's been closed for a while, those usually even out and I have them, you know, right around 37 degrees. Um, you can do Fahrenheit or Celsius. You can unpair it. You can change from the high, medium, or low voltage. I've found that on the Tesla Model Y, having the medium voltage works best. It uh, keeps it the coolest, the fastest. At the same time, it never turns off or anything like that, so I haven't had it trip or lose any connection like I did when I had it on high. So my suggestion would be to just set that at medium and you're good to go. You can turn it on or off from right here from the power button, and that's pretty much it. You can also use a little slider here to adjust the temperature. That's the easiest way to do it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. The other app that I use for the uh, Govi Wi-Fi thermometer is this one. And as you can see, it currently shows that inside right now, it's set at 36 degrees. I also have it set so that if it goes below 25 degrees Fahrenheit or above 45 degrees Fahrenheit, that it'll send me a push notification. Regardless of wherever I am in the world, that'll send me a push notification. It's currently just uh, hooked up right now via Bluetooth. You can see that. It, I don't have my MiFi device with, and you can see that the battery is also a little bit low on it, so I should probably replace that battery. We're looking at, uh, I think it's $440, and they're running right now. It's like a $22 off that. I'll again link everything down in the description below. So although it's at $440 or with the discount about $418, that's actually not that bad when you compare it to like a Dometic or something like that. Then you're talking, you know, $1,500. And so I think for the, for the price, uh, although $400 is still a lot, I think it's actually a really good buy. And so far, I haven't had any issues with this thing in the four months that I've had it. So I'd say this is definitely a strong buy. So if you've got any questions, make sure to, uh, again, leave the comments below. I get back to those usually daily. So let me know. All right, so what are some of the things that I like about the bodega and a few things that I don't like about it? Well, spoiler alert, um, I like a lot and there's very little I don't like. First and foremost, I love that it is super sturdy. It has the four spots here if you wanna like lay a cup or a drink up here, but it's definitely solid enough if you wanna sit on it. And when you need to roll it, it's got nice, big, tough wheels here, along with the ability to just pull this out, lift it up and bring it into you know the hotel or wherever you need to take it to. So super convenient to move around, not too heavy when you wanna lift it up. And so you have the handle here, you have a handle on the back here and you know you can just lift up it's not light but not too bad either and i as you saw i have some stuff in there as well but what i generally do when i'm camping is i'll just take it out lay it on the ground just kind of roll it around the side of the car to the front seat and i'll put the towels down and then i just take it lift it up and set it inside now after doing it the wrong way for a little bit i found that if i put this toward the front of the car that works best and actually which I'll show you in a minute, what I tend to do is because this slightly goes over, right over the dashboard, what I normally do is just get like a new paper towel and I just stick it like right underneath like that and then it kind of just rests right on the dashboard and never moves, never slides or anything like that, works perfect. All right, so let's take this to the front of the car where I normally have it when I go camping. All right, so I generally would take three towels. Um, I use the two for the bottom and then this to kind of cover the whole seat just in case anything ever leaked or anything like that. At least it would protect it a little bit. Then I take these two. And I usually just kind of roll one up, place it on the seat right there. I take this one roll it up too. And then I take this one. Lay it on the seat like that. And then I just take it and put it in. Handle 
to be toward the inside so I can easily grab it and access food. So you can see, nice and level, goes in there no problem. Seat is protected, so no problems there either. All right, so as you can see right here, it kind of goes right up against this. I can kind of move it back a little bit, but I don't want to mess any of this up or, you know, I don't want to scratch that at all. So what I have been doing is I usually just take a roll of paper towel and I just kind of lift it up. Voila, no problem. It literally is perfectly straight and I can easily access it from the inside. And that's it. Uh, if I need to put a few things up here, which you've seen in a couple previous videos, sometimes at night, if I have a bunch of camping gear with, I might have to put a bag or two up here when I get ready for bed. But obviously this thing is solid as a rock. No problems, it's not gonna scratch anything up here. Um, I have the other side. There's enough of the towel on the other side that it won't uh, go into the screen or anything like that. So yeah, it's kind of like the perfect little solution. All right, so now you have the cord here and every Tesla has two 12 volt, well, at least the Model Ys have two 12 volt ports. One is in the back that I showed you that's around the corner. It's kind of in the wheel well area. And the other one is actually just right here. So you just take that, open it up, plug that in. You can close it up still. And then this part goes into the bodega. And so on the back here, there's just a little hole. And you just pop it in right there. And she's on. And you can kind of hear it. But it's not bad at all. Then if you want to access any of the food, just grab it right here. But as you can see, nice and level. Right here, I haven't really had it rub up or anything. I haven't had any problems. You could probably put a, like ball up a towel or something like that and just put it right down here so that it won't slide over this way. I haven't really had too much problem with that, but I usually do keep a few things down here, so that could be why. All right, so that pretty much wraps up this review of the Bodega Dual Zone 12 volt portable car fridge freezer. Uh, again, this thing is perfect for camping. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment below and I usually try to get back to those right away. I appreciate you watching. If you uh, like this video and wanna see more like it, uh, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, I'll see you in the next travel video or review. Thanks for watching.